set about to describe uh, climate change and deal with the controversies of climate change in 60 minutes, it was clear to us that well, first we needed to show people what was happening, then we needed to explain why it was happening, and then in the midst of all of that, it became a huge political issue, and we discovered that the government uh, of, of this administration was not leveling with the American people about uh, the causes and the extent of climate change, and so we did some work in that area too. This is a trip that we took down to Patagonia, just one of the most beautiful places I have ever seen in the world. We were down in Chile with a Chilean glaciologist by the name of Gino Casasa, and Gino took us to a place called Glacier O'Higgins, which, as you will see in the piece, is the most rapidly receding glacier in all of South America. And this provide, provides a stark representation of how rapidly climate change is beginning to change many parts of our planet. Now O'Higgins is morphing into a lake, retreating more than any glacier in South America. The glacier was sitting where we are sitting right now. We would have been covered by ice. I think it's a very clear picture. Uh, that the world is getting warmer and that the impacts which were projected even 10 or 20 years ago are happening right now. As you know, because of the work of, of Paul Majewski and others, the effects of climate change are, are most readily apparent way up north in the Arctic and way down south in Antarctica. And those were some of the uh, some of the pictures that we've been able to shoot to show how much things have changed in, in really just a few decades or so. One of the things that we wanted to do after we showed folks what was happening was we wanted to try to explain why it was happening, the entire controversial issue of anthropomorphic change. So we went down all the way to Antarctica with Paul several months ago to look at, at that piece and to discover how it is that science knows what it knows about climate change at this point in time. Oh, we of course like to be able to demonstrate that over the last few thousand years, this temperature change truly is different. Is warming caused by man's pollution in the atmosphere? Over the past 15 years, this region, the Antarctic Peninsula, the northwestern part, and the islands around it, has been going up in temperature about one degree every decade. And that makes the region the fastest warming place on Earth. Majewski is here to drill an ice core, because when ice is laid down, it captures everything in the air. Drilling down is drilling through time. By chemically analyzing the core, he can see what was in the air thousands of years ago. He and his colleagues have found some of the most powerful evidence that man is changing the climate. What do the ice cores tell you about greenhouse gases? Now we know from the ice core record that it's the, the levels and the speed of rise are significantly, significantly greater than anything in the last 850,000 years. And the levels that we expect to get uh, by the end of the century are going to be double what we have today. Over the last several years, as the evidence for climate change has become more and more compelling, it seemed that the Bush administration was more and more determined to blunt this information and keep scientists from telling what they knew, government scientists in particular, which is, of course, a tremendous violation of the principle of scientific freedom and scientific truth. So we began to delve into that with uh, one of the best climate scientists in the world, and that's James Hansen, who is the head of the Goddard Research Center uh, in New York City, which is part of NASA. Hansen has done groundbreaking work on climate change for many, many years. He was one of the very first people to notice uh, what was happening and to, put the, uh, to connect the dots into why it was happening. But Hansen began to find, as he told the public what he, what his research and what his research institute was finding, that the administration started to lean on him to stop telling people what he knew. Here is uh, James Hansen in our piece about the Bush administration's view of climate change. You believe that the administration is censoring what you can say to the public? 
Well, they, they're censoring whether or not I can say it. I mean, I, I, I say what I believe, if I'm allowed to say it. What James Hansen believes is that global warming is accelerating. He points to the melting Arctic and to Antarctica, where new data show massive losses of ice to the sea. Is it fair to say at this point that humans control the climate? Is that possible? There's no doubt about that. The natural changes, the speed of the natural changes is now dwarfed by the changes that humans are making to the atmosphere and to the surface. Those human changes, he says, are driven by burning fossil fuels, which pump out greenhouse gases like CO2, carbon dioxide. Hansen says that his research shows man has just 10 years to begin to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, or global warming will reach what he calls a tipping point and will become unstoppable. He says the White House is blocking that message. That was an example of the administration trying to suppress the information about climate change, but we discovered that there was something even more egregious going on, and that was actually rewriting the science to, to change what the scientists were writing before it got out into the public and before it got out to Congress. Uh, we found a uh, government science writer by the name of Rick Peltz, who worked in the Clinton administration, worked in the Bush administration, and his job was to write science reports for the public and for the Congress. And one of his areas of special expertise is climate change. And he was in charge of writing an annual document which is required by law, required by the Congress, called Our Changing Planet. It's essentially a compilation of everything that we know about climate change in order to report to the Congress so they can make decisions about it. Well, after a certain point, Rick discovered that his science writing was getting heavily edited over at the White House. So we, uh, we got a hold of Rick, he sat down for an interview with us, and uh, he had kept the originals of all of the documents that he had, and reports he had written as they came back from the White House, and so we were able to feature some of the editing that was going on in those reports. Here's Rick Peltz. A large number of edits handwritten on the hard copy by the Chief of Staff of the Council on Environmental Quality. And the Chief of Staff is who? Phil Cooney. He is a scientist? No, he's a lawyer. <coughs> he was a lobbyist for the American Petroleum Institute before going into the White House. Phil Cooney, the former oil industry lobbyist, became Chief of Staff at the White House Council on Environmental Quality. Pilt says Cooney edited climate reports in his own hand. Here, a line that said Earth is undergoing rapid change becomes maybe undergoing change. Uncertainty becomes significant remaining uncertainty. This line that says energy production contributes to warming is just cross out. Phil Cooney, the editor of those climate documents, uh, left the White House not long after that report and uh, went to work at Exxon. <laughs> what we glean from all of this, I mean, clearly there's been an enormous sea change in this country, I would say, in just the last four years, where the information about climate change has become so overwhelming that efforts to blunt that, efforts to bury that, efforts to hope that if you just wrote the reports a different way, climate change would go away, all of those efforts have come to nothing. It's been a massive change in this country in terms of the attitude in a very, very short period of time. I attribute that to the wonderful tradition of scientific freedom and scientific truth and the ability to report the truth no matter who might stand in the way, no matter what powerful lobbying group might stand in the way. We live in a great age when it comes to information. Information has never been more abundant, it's never been cheaper to get a hold of, it's never been easier to get a hold of, and I think most of the world is waiting for us to do something to put our money where our mouth is before they're willing to take the next step as well. Hey, you know, aren't there a lot of uh, reputable, serious climate scientists who don't believe 
that climate change is anthropomorphic, and isn't there a lot of evidence that suggests that it's solar variability or something, and, and it doesn't have anything to do with man at all? And uh, I thought for a moment, and I thought, well, no. Um, <laughs> there really aren't. Um, there are... I mean, there are some, to borrow Jim Hansen's phrase, I believe there are some things that reach a tipping point, and I think climate change and, and, and the anthropomorphic forcing of climate change uh, has, is one of those issues that has reached a tipping point where, uh, no, there are not many very serious people who are working in this area who disagree. I started my career working in the Antarctic like a lot of other people in, in this room, and we thought it was a place that could never change. 